a hands-on look at the top features for Apple's Pro Display XDR 6K 32-inch display. Check it out. 9to5Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. If you just got a new Mac Pro, this utility can help keep your Mac running fast for years to come. With it, you can delete system junk, unseen apps, and hidden clutter. And since macOS Catalina no longer supports 32-bit apps, Clean My Mac X helps to quickly identify these apps, delete them, or find corresponding 64-bit versions if available. And it's all handled via a gorgeous interface. Click the link in the description to visit cleanmymac.com to download your copy today. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. All right, folks, thanks for joining me. This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. How you doing out there today? We are going to unbox right now the Apple Pro Display XDR. This is, as I stated at the outset, a 32 inch display, a 6K display. And I think you'll agree when I say that this display is very good looking. All right, so just like the Mac Pro, it has the sort of stark exterior on the box, just has the text, a little logo, you got some details about the display on the back. Get this little pull tab here, just pull that, and that allows you to access the contents inside. But before we get to that, there's another important thing we have to unbox. The Pro Stand, of course, because otherwise we'd have nowhere to put the Pro Display XDR. So we need this stand. Obviously, Apple does also make a VESA mount as well. You can get that if you want to, but I particularly like the Pro Stand. It also comes with its own design by Apple and California packet. No Apple stickers inside, of course, but you do have some regulatory information and then you have the getting started guide as well. And that getting started guide is actually like a, like a book, just like the Mac Pro. And the reason being is that this isn't just some run of the mill plastic stand that you attach to your monitor with a couple of screws. No, this thing is, well, first of all, it's a thousand bucks, which is hard to justify. Despite how impressive the engineering is, it is very hard to justify a thousand dollars for this stand. I don't care how much engineering went into this thing, that's still a hard pill to swallow. But despite that, I mean, I feel like Apple kind of has you kind of stuck. I mean, because the alternative is to use a VESA mount with like a monitor arm, but to me that just doesn't do it justice. Because as you'll see, this stand is better than any monitor stand I've ever used. It is impressive, but still not worth a thousand bucks, I'm sorry. Um, so what else is inside the, the box here for the Pro Display XDR? You have a cleaning cloth with an embossed Apple logo, a two meter Thunderbolt 3 cable and a power cable. Both of them are braided for extra durability. And I love how the sides of the box open up. It's just a little attention to detail that Apple does with their packaging that I appreciate. So you have the DAC or the design by Apple in California packet. I'm just gonna call it the DAC from now on. Thumbs down for my ridiculousness. And then you have a little note inside the box telling you how to mount the display to the stand using the built-in magnets. So here is the cleaning cloth, very premium cleaning cloth, folks. This is why this whole thing cost a fortune. This, folks, is premium microfiber of the highest grade. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the cables because they actually are pretty high quality cables. The Thunderbolt 3 cable is of course braided. It's a two meter cable, so it's gonna give you plenty of slack to connect to your Mac. Oh, that rhymed. And you have a power cable that's braided as well with the Mickey Mouse connector on the end. So here's the DAC. Okay, I'll stop being crazy. Here's the design by Apple and California packet with the Apple stickers. These are pro Apple stickers, by the way. And then you have the regulatory information, warranty information. And then of course you have your getting started guide. And this is a very verbose getting started guide. It gives you some history of the design of the display, the decisions they made, the full array local dimming, the backlight LEDs, how to clean the display, how to use the VESA mount. Is it VESA or Visa? I've always wondered that. I just never bothered to look it up. I probably should do that. Let me know down below in the comments if you guys know. All right, so let's take off the plastic. There we go. There we go. Pro Display XDR. Of course, I'm not gonna sit it down like this, but I just wanted to show you the rear of it with that same lattice design that you'll find on the Mac Pro. And now I'll just connect it to the Pro Stand. 
using the magnets, just like that. All right, so let's talk about design, which is one of the strongest assets of this display. If you've ever used any other monitor before, you know that they are usually pretty terrible from a design perspective for a variety of different reasons. But this display is solid. It features the same lattice pattern that you find on the Mac Pro, and that helps keep the display lightweight relatively. But the lattice pattern serves an even more important purpose, helping to keep the display cool. There's an array of 576 blue LEDs that get really hot when they run at full brightness for a sustained amount of time. So that lattice pattern helps to facilitate airflow as well to keep it cool. Not to mention that it just looks downright awesome, right? So build quality wise, this is basically just all aluminum and glass. Even the bottom of the display, there's no slots or slats or buttons or speakers even. There's no speakers on the Pro Display XDR. You'll need to provide your own. And what's really cool, especially if you're an iMac owner and you're coming from an iMac where you had that chin on the bottom, there's no chin to be found on here. There's not even an Apple logo on the front of the display. There's nothing but glass and just a tiny bezel. Folks, I have to admit, this is an awesome looking display, an awesome design. It's 32 inches as well, not to mention that you have all those pixels packed in to this 32 inch form factor. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but let's talk about the adjustable pro stand a little bit more in depth because while it is overpriced, obviously, it's still really nice because it has a built-in counterbalance system. So it makes it almost effortless, almost feels like the display is weightless as you move it and maneuver it here on this stand. And like I mentioned earlier, the stand is a solid, like literally a solid piece of aluminum. This isn't hollow. This is completely aluminum forged out one single piece of aluminum. You can see the chamfered edges here where you can route your cables. And that magnetic connector just allows you to quickly attach the Pro Display XDR. It orients itself automatically and it simply locks into place. Whereas with other monitors I've tried in the past, yeah, you had to like use a screwdriver and all this other ridiculous stuff. This thing is so easy to attach and detach. That doesn't mean it's worth a thousand dollars, but at least you feel like you're getting quality if you're gonna pay that much money. And here's what I love about this thing, the counterbalance system. That makes the Pro Display XDR, which is a heavy display despite the lattice pattern, it makes it feel almost weightless as you maneuver it here on the stand. So you can tilt it positive 25 degrees and negative five degrees. So you can get that perfect viewing angle as you go about working on this display. It also features a total height adjustment of 120 millimeters or 60 millimeters in each direction. So the fact that you have a counterbalance system coupled with the heavy stand means that when you move this display to the very top, for instance, it's not gonna bounce like other monitors tend to do when you move them to the top. I know the LG Ultrafine displays had a problem with the monitor, like the stand actually bouncing off your desk as you moved it to the top position. This isn't gonna do that because the stand is so heavy and you have that very intricate counterbalance system assisting you as you adjust this display. Uh, so what do you guys think about all this? Let me know down below in the comment section your thoughts. Another benefit of the Pro Stand is that you can slightly adjust either left or right like this. So if you're on an uneven surface, you can make sure that the monitor is even as you work. So it's not gonna be a lot of adjustment, but just a little bit. Uh, this isn't the first display to do that. A lot of displays employ a similar function. Now the Pro Display XDR, as you can see, can rotate into portrait mode. And the thing I like about this is that Apple really went above and beyond to make sure that the cables don't get all tangled up when you do so. And also notice the lock is in the exact same position. And it's the little details like that that make me appreciate this stand and the just the overall build quality of the Pro Display XDR Plus stand. So here it is rotating into portrait mode. And while you cannot raise or lower the display while in portrait mode, you can tilt just like I'm doing right here. So we'll go ahead and unlock and rotate it back into landscape mode. And again, the pro stand makes this all but effortless. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section. Yeah, I'm in rare form today. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about these braided cables for a second. Again, quality cables, they're not going to tangle. As you see right here, you have the Thunderbolt cable. I just showed you the power cable. 
And here's the little Mickey Mouse connector, just plugs right into the Pro Display XDR. It also has that little opening right there in the stand with the chamfered edges to route the cables through. So you're not gonna have any sharp edges as you route those cables and other USB-C cables through the stand. Now, speaking of USB-C, there is a built-in USB hub. Now, if you're connecting to a Mac Pro, Apple says that this thing is going to connect at USB 2.0 speeds, which is kind of a bummer. But if you're connecting to a 16 inch MacBook Pro, you get USB 3.1 Gen 1 speeds. When you rotate into portrait mode with the Mac connected, notice what happens. It automatically will change into portrait mode which is awesome because previously if you wanted to do this, you had to go into display settings and manually change settings. Now it's just automatic. And this is great for reading websites or coding or anything else that benefits from a portrait orientation. And when you rotate it back, yep, guess what? It goes back into landscape mode just like that. Pretty awesome, wouldn't you say? And although I've already sort of touched on the bezels for the Pro Display XDR, I just wanted to sort of reiterate it because these bezels are small. You have this 32 inch display, a 6K display, and these tiny bezels on the edges that are symmetrical. There's no big chin like you have on the iMac Pro. There's no logos or anything on the front. It's just all glass. And that's made even better by the fact that there are over 20 million pixels crammed into this display for a 218 PPI rating, the same pixels per inch for the 27 inch iMac and iMac Pro. So obviously when running at the native resolution, 6,016 by 3384, that's gonna give you a lot of real estate. Granted, everything's gonna be really small when running at the native resolution, but that gives you this beautiful 32 inch canvas where you can fit a lot of assets on screen at the same time. But most people aren't gonna be running at the native resolution. Most people are gonna use the default resolution, which is 3008 by 1692. What's special about that is that it is exactly half of the native resolution. So no weird scaling here. You're gonna get a true 2X retina mode with this display and it looks glorious. And you're gonna to get tons of working real estate. So here in Final Cut Pro 10, you can see I have a two to one 4K video running at 100%. And you can see I have full access to the rest of the app, my browser, my timeline, the timeline index, inspector, effects, etc. Now let's talk about the namesake of this monitor, Extended Dynamic Range or XDR. This is the result of multiple technologies. For instance, you have 1000 nits sustained brightness and 1600 nits peak brightness, thanks to those blue LED backlights. But it's not just brightness alone, it's also about extending color. So you get a P3 wide color gamut like other Apple products, so it can display a wider set of colors when compared to standard RGB, but you also get 10 bit color depth. So you have a wider range of color and a wider depth of colors in that range, but it doesn't stop there. The contrast ratio of this display is 1 million to one. To put that into perspective, that's the same contrast ratio rating for Apple's OLED display on the iPhone XS. So the result of all this, well, frankly, it's quite stunning to see in person, especially when you have two contrasting colors that are in motion with very bright areas, like in this screensaver. It's extremely impressive to see in person. It almost feels like, I'm not exaggerating here, like the, the image is popping off the display as if it's 3D. And I know that sounds ridiculous and like a lot of hyperbole, and you're probably used to that from me by now, but I'm serious, like that's how, that's the kind of feeling that I got when looking at just this screensaver. Of course, proper HDR videos and movies are gonna look really good on the Pro Display XDR as well. Another thing that makes this display extremely impressive are the viewing angles. You can view this monitor from 89 degrees in either direction, up, down, left, or right, PA start. So even at extreme angles, text will be discernible. You're gonna still be able to see images and you're not gonna see a lot of color shift in the process. It's like an IPS display on steroids. Now, thanks to the Pro Display XDR's full array local dimming, it's going to be able to better control the light hitting the display from the backlight which helps to reduce that blooming effect that you get when you have a bright image on a dark background. Now, of course, temper your expectations because there are less than 600 zones and some monitors get way more than that, especially on the professional end. But I think the Pro Display XDR performs decently. Um, you could see a little bit of a bloom around this box, this white box on this black display. So you can see a little bit of blooming. Uh, it's accentuated by my camera. To my naked eye, I can barely make out any blooming on this box, but I feel like the camera accentuates it more. Of course, displays with more zones are going to perform better 
for this particular type of test. So if your HDR workflow absolutely relies on having minimal blooming, then this is something you want to consider closely. Apple includes quite a few different reference modes in the display settings for the Pro Display XDR. And these modes are pre-calibrated profiles for different workflows in production environments. So depending on the type of work you're involved in, whether it be creating HDR content or design and print or photos, you can switch to that particular reference mode right there on the fly within display settings. You can also set up shortcuts. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But for instance, you have the Pro Display XDR reference mode, which gives you 1600 nits of peak brightness. Or there's the standard Apple Display P3 reference mode, which gives you bright is similar to an iMac 500 nits. You'll also be able to create your own reference modes in a future macOS update. Now, like I said, Apple allows you to set up shortcuts that you can access different reference modes right from the menu bar. So if you just click the display button, you can see the different reference modes that you have set up as shortcuts. So I can quickly switch over to Pro Display XDR P3 1600 nits just by clicking like that. Super simple, super easy. And one last top feature to talk about, of course, the Pro Display XDR works with the Mac Pro. I mean, that's obvious, right? It has the same lattice pattern design. Uh, they look good together, right? But it's also compatible with other Mac models like the 16 inch MacBook Pro or the 15 inch MacBook Pro or the iMac introduced in 2019 or Mac computers, any Mac computer for that matter, with Thunderbolt 3 ports, you can connect to a Blackmagic eGPU, either the Pro or the regular version and get connected with those devices. So even the MacBook Air can connect at full 6K using one of Blackmagic's eGPU solutions. And even some other Mac models that Apple doesn't list as being compatible will work with the Pro Display XDR. They may not work in full 6K resolution, but they will work. And here's another really cool thing. You can connect your iPad Pro and use the Pro Display XDR as an external display. So here I am editing video in LumaFusion and using the Pro Display XDR as one large full screen viewer. That's pretty cool. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you guys think? What do you think about the Pro Display XDR? What do you think about the top features we covered in this video? Let me know down below. Thumbs up and subscribe for more like this. 9to5 Mac on YouTube is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. Before updating your Mac, use the new Space Lens feature to build an interactive visual map of your storage. That'll help you quickly find the biggest space wasters in the form of space bubbles. That's just one way that Clean My Mac X can help you prepare to upgrade to a new OS. Click the link in the description to visit cleanmymac.com for a free download.